What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Abe. This is Eve Online, and today, and for maybe the next at least one or two videos, since it's a somewhat involved topic, uh, we're going to be talking about moon mining. So, what is moon mining, you say? Well, normally, if you scroll over here in your overview and you see asteroid belts, this system has a lot of them. But uh, one source of mining is uh, we've talked about two in the past. One is mining out of belts. And one is mining out of anomalies. So if we pull up, I've got anomalies blocked at the moment. Um, if we pull up the scanner, you'll see that there are asteroid clusters. Some of them are very specific. It'll be like a Jaspit and, uh, I don't know, Hemor fight or whatever one of that H ores is. It'll be specific to a type of ore. Like this is a Bistot cluster or something. Um, so those are the two that we've talked about before, where there, you've got the anomalies and the, the asteroid belts. And I've got dogs in here, so I apologize. They're about to start playing with each other. Always happens this way. Um, but the third, the third type is moon mining. And as you can see, um, what people do, and this, is, this first video is just going to be a really high-level kind of overview, um, is what people do is they set up an Athenor um, outside of a moon. And if we come up here to the system, it lists all the items in the system. You can see all of the various planets. Now, when I come over here, I don't see the moons. I have to rely on my warp out tab, which I get from the Z-S overview. Um, you can do a little bit of Googling, try to join the channel if you want this overview. And it lists out all of the moons here. All right, there's a shit ton. As you might imagine with that many mining belts, uh, there are a ton of moons. And so uh, taking a step back, like people will come out and they will scan each of these moons. And it's a five minute process. You come, you align your launcher. <clears throat> we'll get into the specifics of all of what these, these things are um, later. But you align your launcher at the moon, you launch it. It brings up some information about what, what is in that moon and um here let's just try to select an item and get ourselves traveling there um and it'll tell you what that moon is made up of so if i look over at the mining tab it's bailey and ella um and you'll see here that there is spotomane uh Arcanor, Jaspit, and that's primarily what this is. But there's also things in this moon that you might not recognize, which is sylvite or brimful sylvite, which is like a, a higher density version of it. <laughs> Bailey, Bailey gets to feeling her oats. Here, come on, girl. Come on. Come on, let's go on. There we go. Okay. All right. So. Um, it'll tell you what the makeup of the moon is. And some moons are worth more than others, obviously. Um, in high sec, you'll get, you can get all of the, the normal ores um, that you might find throughout the rest of the universe, including low and null sec. So this is a way to access in high sec um, some of those ores like Arcanor, or Bistot, or Spotomain. And um, another aspect to moons is this moon goo. And with this, like this particular moon has sylvite, and as with everything else in this game, there is not just one moon goo. There are a bunch of different types of moon goos. And if you go to one of these other websites that I've pointed out in the past, you can see sort of the valuation and what is in those moon goos. Um, and so oh, we'll pull up some of these sites and look through that in future videos. But so what you do is people go around, they scan a bunch of moons, they figure out which one has the ores that they want. Uh, or that they need and want to access. And then they plant an Athenor right around, you see this little yellow dot here? Let's see, I don't know. There we go, so there's the beacon. I thought it was maybe here, but they place it in a proximity to this Upwell Moon Mining Beacon, or maybe this pops out of, I don't know. I'm learning as I go through this with you. So um, for this, as far as this video is concerned, they drop this Athenor or this station, you, they may be able to drop a Tatara as well, but I think it's just Athenors. Um, again, more info on the specifics in the next video. But they drop a station, they equip it with a drilling rig, 
And if you look closely here, out in the distance, you see this little crater and what looks like a small chunk of moon or whatever? That it sets, it drills out a chunk of that moon and then pulls it in. And you can change the amount of time that it takes to pull um, that block of moon. And the longer the pull, the bigger the chunk and the more ore that there's going to be in it. And if you're the owner of the station, it'll tell you, you know, just how much ore is going to be showing up with your pull, right? And you'll be able to get a good estimate of the price or the ISK value of all of the ore that's coming. Um, you're going to be able to figure out the exact time and day when it will pop or show up. And let me see here. Let me check this other station and see. But right now you can see all of these chunks of rock out here and this one is active but we're going to go to another moon and see um i'm in an interceptor for fast travel but we're going to we're going to check this out let me close my scanning window all right we're at another one all right and so here's it's at a somewhat different stage you can see that this object is now the moon chunk is 161 kilometers off that means it's about to pop it's it's very close and obviously as it gets closer it gets bigger but so what this does is it gives people a different source for ore, right? And unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to control who can mine it. And so people do what's called ninja moon mining. Uh, it's generally good practice if you are mining moon ore that uh, it has been pulled by a station that you don't own and that doesn't belong to your corporation or your alliance to send either a portion of your ores to the owner of that station or to tip them a nice amount because you're essentially, they've paid for pulling out this ore and I would guess that they'll take umbrage at you mining and taking it. But that said, there, most people, if you're gonna set this up for yourself, the moon ore is only gonna hang around for something like one or two days. I believe it's like 48 hours, but again, more details in the future. Uh, and then it just disappears. So if you don't mine all of it, might as well have other people mine it, right? And it'll tell you when you go to your station who has mined what. It keeps track of everything. So it gives people access to ores from other parts of space that they wouldn't necessarily have access to. And the moon goo or the moon ore also gives you a very specific type of material of what looks to be different rarity types. And so it's like a whole other categorization of, of material that you need for a specific type of industry. I don't know off the top of my head what type of industry, but like I said, in future videos, we'll get into the specifics and go through all of that. But that's the basic gist is all moons now are mineable, but you need to have a station that will drill and pull a chunk of the moon out. You got to scan down the moons first. You got to pull out the chunk, blow it up. Mine, and then you have to come out and mine it. So just pulling it out of the moon doesn't do it. You gotta go out with a fleet of mining ships or just your one mining ship. Um, if you don't have a fleet, it might not be worth it to you. Just as a general rule of thumb, not rule really, but just as a general estimate, setting up an Athenor like this is like one to two billion isk, including the drill rig and then making your first pull. Um, and if you wanna set it up with a refinery so that you can compress your ore in that station that's even more money so it is not for the faint of heart or the the, uh, the poor it may not be for you as an individual either but if you have a bunch of friends who are all in different corporations or whatever and you want to set something like this up for yourself this is a way to do it so tune in for future episodes we'll get into more of the specifics um, just from step one to you know, of the scanning, step two to the setting up of your station. I'm not going to be able to do it because I'm not going to. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to set up an Athenor for myself or for my corporation. I'm I'm not that into mining, and I don't want to maintain it or defend it. Um, also, keep in mind that if you get into this yourself with the new war declaration mechanics, you are not at least the way they're talking about it. I don't think it's implemented yet, but you are not able to be war decked if you don't have a structure in space. This would count as a structure. So people could declare war on you and then destroy your Athenor. 
and they did that to somebody that I watch on Twitch. This guy set up a whole bunch of Athenors on Moon so that they were popping all the time for his viewers to mine and enjoy. And um, because it's Eve, a bunch of people decided they were going to come and destroy it. And they wiped out the vast majority of his resources. And we're talking, not his resources, but like of his stations that he set up for this purpose. So, food for thought. Keep that in mind. All right, so moon mining. I'll do the best I can without having, without being able to go through it myself. Um, mostly we'll, we'll sort of leverage the web and I'll provide, if I can think of it and find some good examples, I'll try to provide some uh, links to other people's videos that I think do a good job of showing the very specifics of walking through it. Um, but that's where we'll go. We'll start there and, and build on that. So hopefully you found this informational and we'll get more into the details next time. So thanks for watching and I will catch you later, but hit me up in the comments with your questions and we'll, we'll try to do a deep dive on it like this. All right, thanks a lot.